and about that appearance today in the briefing room, Politico describes it this way, quote, Kelly, long reticent of talking about his son's 2010 death, was not thrilled that Trump made his personal devastation a political football, said several people who know him. But his boss was in a jam. And he decided to come into the briefing room after telling others Trump was being treated unfairly and that he hated seeing dead soldiers become a political cudgel. Here with us to talk about this tonight, retired four-star U.S. Army General Barry McCaffrey, wounded multiple times in Vietnam, heavily decorated for his combat actions. He went on to be a battlefield commander in the Persian Gulf. He retired with four stars. And retired U.S. Army Colonel Jack Jacobs, one of only 72 living recipients of the Medal of Honor for his combat actions in Vietnam. Both gentlemen, MSNBC military analysts. Jack, we'll start with you. You know General Kelly. What did you make of today? Uh, I think he did, as you reported, something he didn't want to do. Um, I would have been happier had he not brought up the subject of Ms. Wilson. Uh, and then it would have been a, an absolutely clean delivery. The president has doubled down on the congresswoman. Yeah, side. that's what happens when you make ad hominem arguments. It doesn't get it off the table. It brings it up again and, and makes it... Um, and recycles it and makes it much more difficult to get rid of. Was he a good representative for your beloved armed services? Yeah, I, uh, he said a couple of really interesting things, and they revolve around the wide gulf that exists between the people who are serving and the people who are being served. He asked whether or not anybody knew a Gold Star family. Yeah. I, I, we'll go deeper than that. I think the statistics prove that most Americans do not know anybody in uniform. I think that's a dangerous thing, and I was glad that General Kelly brought it up. You used to say to me you could go door to door and go to 250 houses in this modern era before you found a family on average in the United States connected to the military. Well, I could do the math. I could do my third grade yeah. math, and that's all. I grew up in a neighborhood in New York City where every household had made a contribution to defending the republic. You can't find that these days. General McCaffrey, same question to you, sir. Well, look, let me just start by saying I think uh, John Kelly is one of the finest uh, leaders and people I ever met in my life. And I think uh, I agree with Jack. I'm sorry he brought the congresswoman into it. But uh, look, I just went to the dedication of a memorial at Fort Benning, Georgia, the empty museum, to the nearly 7,000 killed in action uh, fighting the global war on terror. Oh, 60,000 killed and wounded, 1,000 women killed and wounded. This has been an ongoing, pretty intense combat action for a small number of people, as Jack points out. Some of them are 10, 15 deployments. Uh, I think this entire notification process, the, I, the letters from the Secretary of Defense, were they handwritten or hand-signed or auto-signed, has gotten turned into a political disgrace. I'd rather see the Sergeant Major of the Army or the Marine Corps uh, welcome these uh, fallen angels home to Dover. The President should be calling these people, for God's sakes. Uh, so, uh, President Trump's an inartful guy. He, you know, he's not good at this sort of thing. I think he called out of a sense of obligation, uh, tried to do the right thing. It didn't come off the right way. They ought to stay out of it and let the armed forces take care of our people. Do you feel that, that the president should avoid these phone calls with all presidents or just this president? All of them. I mean, again, 7,000 killed in action. Vietnam, 59,000 killed in action. World War II, 440,000 killed in action. Of course, we don't need the chief of state to call each individual family. You know, my brother-in-law is killed in action. Jack and I have dozens of people that were important to us that were killed in action fighting in one of these wars. My students out of West Point uh, in the ongoing war. Uh, I, I think uh, this has turned into a political charade. Uh, the cameras, who looked appropriately pious at the event. And by the way, these families are devastated, are vulnerable. At Fort Benning, we had a Gold Star brother and a Gold Star uh, mother uh, talk, and it was really very difficult uh, to, to listen to the, to the sense of loss. But they're buoyed up when they lose these uh, tremendous young men and women. Uh, by the love and support of the armed forces and their family. That's what's important, not a political uh, one-upsmanship going on 
at Dover and then, and, and then in other events. The president ought to have an annual breakfast. He ought to uh, write letters uh, clearly. Uh, but we've got to get the politics out of this process. It's disgraceful. Jack, was today about the chain of command? Well, I think it was. I mean, he is the chief of staff and he is representing the president of the United States at a time when the president of the United States probably shouldn't be talking about any of this. So it is about the chain of command. But at the end of the day, I think what really came through General Kelly's remarks is a verification of something. I can't remember who said it. Who said that the, uh, the United States isn't at war. Uh, these young people who are in uniform are at war, and we shouldn't forget it. Uh, General, I'll let you speak for uh, members of your own family and military service, but were you surprised to hear General Kelly say that his son was on a fifth deployment? It's usually unusual when the uh, son or daughter of a notable person stateside is serving. It's usually kept fairly quiet. I think he's angry. You know, I think uh, he's fed up with a lot of things that are happening and having, uh, you know, he's very protective of the armed forces, starting with his own son, of course. So this is a very uh, sensitive issue to every, not just to the families who have lost their loved ones, uh, near, but everybody in the armed forces. You know, they're, they're still engaged. There's no healing that goes on. People just finally get it in contact. So I think. John Kelly was angry. He didn't like the way the thing was being played out. Uh, I'm sure that, you know, the president's word were inadequate or triggered some reaction, but this shouldn't turn into a long discourse about, uh, you know, who said what to whom. Uh, we had to stay out of this thing, for God's sakes, and let the military bring them home and uh, turn them over to their family. You know, if, you had, if we had 20 million people in uniform, it might be different. You might be able to argue persuasively otherwise. But we've outsourced the defense of the Republic to a very small number of young men and women who are willing to do that. And I think General McCaffrey's absolutely right. Just stay out. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.